أعوذ بالله من الشيطان العين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين بارئ الخلائق أجمعين باعث الأنبياء والمرسلين والحمد لله الذي لا يبلغ مدحته القائلون ولا يحصي نعماءه العادون ولا يودي حقه المجتهدون الذي لا يدركه بعد الهمم ولا يناله غوص الفطن الذي ليس لصفته حد محدود ولا نعت موجود ولا وقت معدود ولا أجل ممدود فطر الخلائق بقدرته ونشر الرياح برحمته ووتد بالسخور ميدان أرضه ثم الصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين خاتم النبيين شفيع المذنبين حبيب الله العالمين أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد وعلى آل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين ولعنة الله على أعدائهم أجمعين من يوم عداوتهم إلى يوم الدين أما بعد فقد قال الله عز وجل في كتابه الحكيم وهو أصدق القائلين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وقل ربي يدخلني مدخل صدق وأخرجني مخرج صدق وجعلني من لدنك سلطانا نصيرا آمنا بالله صدق الله العلي العظيم ما صل على محمد وآل محمد السلام عليكم جميعا ورحمة الله وبركاته I begin in the name of Allah, the most kind, the most merciful. It's due to that kindness and mercy that we have these opportunities where we gather in remembrance and glorification of Him, Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. We then begin this sermon the way the commander of the faithful would begin his by advising us, Usikum ibadallah bi taqwallah, that I advise you, O the servants of God, to be God conscious, God fearing, and pious human beings. Over the past few sermons, over the weeks that we've passed, we have talked about the importance of combating the soul and the need to fight the natural instincts that have developed over time and have become natural within us and how to become a better human being, the kind of human being that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to see. And we asked, last week we talked about one of the main steps in this journey which is to have azam, willpower and the willpower to fight our desires and the willpower to carry on on this journey because it is a long journey. And the first step we said in this journey is Tawbah. And that's what we will start discussing inshallah in these next few weeks. Tawbah is something that's talked about often, we hear it often, we do it often. But when we look at the criteria of Tawbah and how Tawbah needs to be done, there are specific steps that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to complete for us to have an effective tawbah. And this is expected, right? Um, you know, if I gave you or if someone gave us a treasure map, we can't just say, I'm going to find it any way I can. You have to follow the instructions of the treasure map to get to that treasure. Allah is giving us a treasure. Yeah? He's telling us how to get tawbah effectively done so that it would be accepted. And so we have to follow the steps of tawbah to do it correctly. But today we start with more of an introductory discussion. Number one, what is Tawbah, right? Tawbah is a form of repentance, right? It literally means to repent or to become penitent. In other words, to become remorseful. Now, Tawbah is different than Istighfar, right? Istighfar is, for example, when we say Astaghfirullah Rabbi, and then we add Wa Atubu Ilay, but Istighfar is more of a verbal declaration. It's a declaration to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the admittance, a verbal admittance of a mistake that we have made. While tawbah, on the other hand, is a repentance that is accompanied with reform. 
Yeah? Tawbah is action-based. It is not merely verbal. Yeah? Tawbah, in its demonstration, we show Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we have changed our life not to make that same mistake again. And we see this in our own lives. You know, sometimes when our children will do something, they'll say, I'm sorry. But you know they're not really sorry. You know they're sorry truly when they change. They don't make that same mistake again. That is when we know that they have reformed. The same in our day-to-day -day lives. Someone may hurt us. Someone may do something bad to us. And they say sorry. And the next week they'll end up doing the same thing. right? But until they show or demonstrate a change in their life. A change in the way that they act. That is what a reform is about. And so that is what Toba is. Toba is a change in lifestyle. Okay? We know the mistakes that we have made. We know where we have transgressed. And unless and until we are willing to change our lifestyle, then we haven't hit the door of Toba yet. But we'll discuss this in upcoming weeks, inshallah. The second thing to understand about Toba is that Toba is a two-way street. And this is really beautiful. Okay? Toba comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then we do Toba back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala, for example, in Surah Toba, verse number 118, He says, He talks about the three who did not join the Prophet in the Battle of Tabuk. Yeah? And when they did not join the Prophet in the Battle of Tabuk, the people and the Muslims began to isolate themselves from them because they had a responsibility to join the Prophet in this battle. They found themselves in a state where they could not mingle with anyone, they could not conduct business with anyone, and the earth became tight for them with all of its expanse, Allah says. Yeah? And then they finally recognized that, you know what, we made a mistake. At that point, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says what? Thumma taba alayhim. Liyatubu. Very beautiful. Allah says, I did toba on them so that they do toba to me. It's beautiful. Yeah? What does that mean, right? It means that look at how merciful God is, right? Look at how merciful God is. That as soon as we feel like, you know what? I think I messed up. You know what? I shouldn't have done this. At that time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showers his mercy upon us so that we reform our lives. Yeah? And so the next time, you know, the next time you feel a desire to do real tawbah, make sure we do shukr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for showing us the door of tawbah. Yeah? That's how powerful this is and that's how beautiful God is. God doesn't want to see anyone suffer. God does not want to see anyone in the fire of Jahannam. It's our own actions that lead us there, right? But when we accept the mercy of God and in turn do tawbah, that's when we become close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And of course, tawbah is hope, right? Tawbah is hope. Imagine, just for one second, imagine if there was no such thing as tawbah. Yeah, you make a mistake, stays with you for life, yeah? Most people would lose hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They would say, you know what, I've done so many things. And there's no way to come back. What's the point of trying? But Allah always leaves the door of tawbah open, right? Um, and again, like it's, it's something to reflect about, right? That, you know, we are supposed to takhalluk bi akhlaqillah. We are supposed to have the akhlaq of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yet, when someone makes a mistake with us, man, that's a lifetime stamp with that person we give them, isn't it? Yeah, that this person is like this and we've made up our mind. Imagine if God did that with us. But He doesn't. He doesn't. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that whenever you decide to show a form of remorse, I will take you to tawbah. I will accept your tawbah. I will show you how to do tawbah. This is the beauty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is very eloquently stated by our fourth Imam as-Sajjad alayhi afdalu salatu was salam. Ma salli ala Muhammadin wa Ali Muhammad in the munajat of Taibin. You know, when you read the Sahifa Sajjadiya, in the end there are some munajat, some private whispers, that conversations that he has with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One of them is the munajat of those who are doing tawbah. And in it he says, Ilahi, Anta ladhi fatahta li ibadika baban ila afwika sammaytahu tawbah. He says that, Oh Allah, it is you who has opened the door of your pardon and named it Tawbah, named it repentance. 
فَقُلْ تَتُوبُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ تَوْبَةً نَسُوحًا And you said that repent to Allah with a sincere repentance. That's what God wants, right? Not this thing that we've been taught since we were children, Tawbah, 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 Tawbah. Yeah, you do something Tawbah, Tawbah, Tawbah. No, that's not Tawbah, man. Slapping your cheek is not Tawbah. Tawbah is a reform. Tawbah is sincerity. Like, man, I don't want to be away from your mercy, O Allah. And you know, the more love we gain of God, the more understanding we gain of Allah, we will realize the, the lack of value of those things that take us away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah? And those things will seem worthless then, that they're not worth committing and doing. Our scholars have unanimously stated that Tawbah is actually wajib. It is an obligation. Right? And they give naqli proofs and aqli proofs. Naqli proofs are those that are written. For example, in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, tubu ila Allahi tawbatan nasuha. That all you who believe, repent. It's an order. Tubu. Right? And so when an order comes from top to down, that is an obligation that you and I have. And so it's something that we all need. And it's interesting. It shows that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows that we will commit mistakes. Yeah? He knows that we will commit mistakes. You know, it's really interesting as well when you read the Quran and when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes believers and He describes the muttaqeen, one of the attributes of the believers and muttaqeen is what? That when they do something wrong, they repent. It's fascinating, isn't it? That even when we become a muttaqi, when we become a God-conscious individual, Allah still knows we may make mistakes time to time. He does not ever think we have to be perfect. He knows we won't be perfect. We only hit perfection with the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's it, right? But we as human beings make mistakes. We stumble. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to come back to Him. So He orders us to do tawbah. And as well as aqli, it's an intellectual proof, right? Our intelligence, you know, dictates that, there is Im that when there is an imminent threat, that we know that there is something harmful that's going to happen, we take the necessary precautions to safeguard ourselves. Isn't the intellect say that? Of course, right? If there is a storm outside, you take the necessary precautions when you drive, if you even drive, for example. When you drive, there is a possibility you may get into an accident. You may be the safest driver, but somebody may hit you. So you wear the seatbelt, right? Why? Because the intellect tells you you have to protect yourself. You must safeguard yourself. We can talk about vaccines yeah, without getting too controversial. But in the same thing, there's a virus taking place outside. There may be a medication that could help. You protect yourself, right? And you protect others in that process as well. This is even more true for the hereafter. We know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised there is a Jahannam, there is a fire there, right? And the way to safeguard ourselves from that fire is to reform our lives. And so Tawbah is an intellectual deduction of an obligation that we have. And Tawbah is this journey. And inshallah, together we will go on this journey so that we as a community reform our lives and that we reach Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in His mercy and without any sin, inshallah. Wa akhiru da'wan and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Qul huwa Allahu ahad. Allahu samad. Lam yalid wa lam yulad. وَلَمْ يَكُنْ لَهُ كُفُوًا أَحَدٍ صَدَقَ اللَّهُ الْعَلِيُّ الْعَظِيمُ صَلِّ عَلَى مُحَمَّدٍ وَآلِ مُحَمَّدٍ مُحَمَّدٍ وَآلِ مُحَمَّدٍ أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ اللَّعِينِ الرَّجِيمِ بِسْمِ اللَّهِ الرَّحْمَنِ الرَّحِيمِ الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله قاسم الجبارين مبير الظالمين مدرك الهاربين نكال الظالمين صريخ المستصرخين موضع حاجات الطالبين معتمد المؤمنين اللهم صل على خاتم النبيين وسيد المرسلين محمد اللهم صل على
محمد و آل محمد و صلی علی سید الوسیین امیر المؤمنین علی ابن ابی طالب علیہ السلام صلی علی محمد و آل محمد و صلی علی صدیقة الطاہرہ فاطمة الزہرہ سیدتی نساء العالمین اما صلی علی محمد و آل محمد و صلی علی سبتی الرحمہ و امامی الہدا الحسن والحسین سید شباب اہل الجنہ اللہم صلی علی محمد و آل محمد و صلی علی علی ابن الحسین و محمد ابن علی و جعفر ابن محمد و موسیٰ ابن جعفر و علی ابن موسیٰ و محمد ابن علی و علی ابن محمد و الحسن ابن علی و الحجت القائم المہدی اللہم صلی علی محمد و آل محمد صلاة لا غاية لعددها ولا نهاية لمددها ولا نفاد لأمدها اللہم اغفر للمؤمنین والمؤمنات والمسلمین والمسلمات الاحیاء منہم والاموات وتابع بیننا وبینہم بالخیرات انکا مجیب الدعوات انکا علا کل شیئن قدیر اللہم صلی علی علی محمد و عجل فرجہم This week inshallah we will commemorate the 40th, the 40th Since the istishad of our third imam in the shuhada of Karbala, Aba Abdullah al-Hussein, alayhi afdalu salatu wa salam. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that inshallah very soon we get an opportunity to go for the ziyarat of our imam inshallah. And that we receive his shafaat in the hereafter. You know this arba'een, the number 40 has a lot of significance in Islam. It's a number that is repeated quite often. Uh, when we look at the Quran, the number 40 is mentioned numerous times. For example, it's mentioned uh, in reference to our Prophet Musa alayhi salam when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَوَاعَدْنَا مُوسَى ثَلَاثِينَ لَيْلَةً وَأَتْمَمْنَاهَا بِعَشْرَ فَتَمَّا مِيقَاتُ رَبِّهِ أَرْبَعِينَ لَيْلَةً he says that, and we appointed with Musa a time of 30 nights and completed with them 10 more. So the appointed time of his Lord was complete 40 nights. It's also the number 40 is mentioned when he talks about the 40 years that the Banu Israel were banned or prohibited from entering the Holy Lands because of their own transgressions. And it also refers to in Surah Al-Ahqaf, the age of mental maturity for human beings. It's quite interesting. Allah says, حَتَّى إِذَا بَلَغَ أَشُدَّهُ وَبَلَغَ أَرْبَعِينَ سَنَةً قَالَ رَبِّي أَوْزِعْنِي أَنْ أَشْكُرَ نِعْمَتَكَ He says that when he comes of age and reaches 40, he says, my Lord, inspire me to give thanks. It's something about the number 40. You know, we've always heard, you know, that if you have a characteristic and that characteristic is not reformed and it hits the age of 40, it's going to be very difficult after that to reform that character. Not impossible, but it will require a lot of effort at that particular point. 40 is an important number, and when we look at traditions, the number 40 even comes more frequently. For example, there are traditions that talk about memorizing 40 hadith, right? That one who memorizes 40 hadith. Now, memorizing is not just parroting it, right? Where we quote hadith, it's living the hadith. Uh, they will be raised a faqih by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They will be raised a jurist and a scholar by Allah on the day of judgment. We are told that if 40 believers attend a funeral, um, and if they bear witness, you know, in Salatul Jum'a, in Salatul uh, Janaza, Salatul Mayyit, there's a very beautiful line, right? In the end, in the last part, we say, Allahumma inna la na'alamu minhu illa khaira. That, oh Allah, we don't know anything but khair from this person. But you are more knowing. Allah, the tradition says that if a 40 believers say to Allah, we don't know anything but khair, even though Allah may know the shar, He will accept that testimony from those people. Amazing, yeah? This is why we attend Salatul Janazah. I can't emphasize this enough, yeah? When there's a mayat attended, 
Because you'll be one of those people bearing witness and inshallah that when we die, there will be 40 believers bearing witness for us inshallah. And we're also told in traditions that praying for 40 believers before ourselves has tremendous benefit. Imam al-Sadiq alayhi afdalu salatu wa salam. Salli ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad. He's reported to have said, Man qaddama fi du'aihi arba'ina min al-mu'minina thumma da'a li nafstihi ustajiba lahu. He says that one who remembers 40 believers before they remember themselves, and then they ask for their hajat, Allah would accept their hajat. Because you remember it. 40, again, this number comes up all the time, right? And when we come back to Karbala and Imam alayhi salam, this number 40 is very significant, right? Uh, we are told that this is the day when the, the heads of the shuhada reunited back. We are told that this is the day when the families came back. Um, we are told that the skies wept for Imam al Hussein for 40 days. There are many traditions like that. And of course, one of the alamat, one of the signs of a believer, as told by our 11th Imam, is Ziyaratul Arba'in, right? It's the Ziyarat of this 40th. I want to understand this from a spiritual perspective. Okay, because the number 40 is significant. We can't underestimate or devalue this number. From a spiritual perspective, we are told that one who strives for 40 days, seeking closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, strives to become a better human being, strives to be more pious, strives to be more pure, strives to be more sincere, for 40 days, in the end of these 40 days, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will gift them with what they want. Will gift them. Yeah? Um, there's a tradition from our Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him and his family. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. He says, Man akhlasa lillahi arba'ina yawman. That one who purifies their faith for 40 days. فَجَّرَ اللَّهُ يَنَابِيعَ الْحِكْمَةِ مِنْ قَلْبِهِ عَلَى لِسَانِهِ That one who strives for 40 days to purify themselves for Allah, Allah will flow the springs of wisdom from their hearts onto their tongues. SubhanAllah. It's available for us. When you come back to Karbala, I think there is a link in this. Right? That, you know, the first 10 days that we gather, what, is, what has kept... The Azadari of Imam alayhi salam alive till today is not just the matam that we do, not just the tears, but these gatherings of learning that we have over the first 10 days. It's an institution, it's a university. We've always heard this, right? You know, there are people who attend the first 10 nights that never attend mosque otherwise. They learn about religion on these nights that they would never learn about in other ways. This is a beautiful thing. And during these 10 nights, if we were to learn one thing and then keep it going for 40 days, when this Arba'een would come, we would be a transformed human being. Transformed. This Arba'een is significant. Okay? And so if we did not do that, that's not the end for us. We have another 40 days. There's always 40 days. But pick one thing. Inshallah, I'll do this, you do this. Pick one thing that you want to master. Whether it's being in the state of wudu, for example. Whether it's drinking water while sitting down in the evenings and nights, for example. Um, whether it is doing a sajda to Allah to thank Him at the end of the night. Simple things. You don't have to be... Don't pick lofty, lofty goals right away. Start simple. But if you've already done the simple, pick lofty, right? You want to recite Ziyarat of Ashura for 40... Pick something. And stick with it. And you will notice a change in these 40 days. And you will see that closeness, inshallah, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa akhiru da'wan and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim wal asr. Inna al insana lafi khusr. Illa al ladhina amanu wa amilu salihat wa tawasaw bil haq. Wa tawasaw bil sabr. Sadaqallahu al aliyu al azim. Salli ala Muhammad.